Hi, konnichiwa. Welcome to Japanese cooking. My name is Sachiko. I'm chef and cookery teacher. Today I am going to talk about guess what? It's all about soy sauce. Okay, do you have a favorite one? Hopefully this video will explain to you to understand a little bit more about soy sauce and help you to choose that right one for your need. Like us, soy sauce nations, we stick with familiar brands, don't we? For me, I use shoyu, which is Japanese style soy sauce. I normally buy it at Oriental supermarkets. But while I start on lockdown, I checked options at local supermarkets in UK and I'm really surprised how many options we have here so I decide to find out more about it before I go on to the actual tastings I might check uh, what options we have online this is Okado UK's one of biggest online shop here type in soy sauce Ta -da 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 -da. Okay, here we go. Result 55 products. Wow, that's very impressive numbers. Let's see Blue Dragon Light Soy Sauce, Kikoman Less Salt, Kikoman Less Soy Sauce, Light Soy Sauce, Blue Dragon Dark, Dark Soy Sauce Premium Light, Premium Dark. Obviously, there were some not soy sauce. It looks like uh, uh, about 40 different kinds, even though this is really overwhelming, isn't it? Which one shall I buy? To find out, let's get back to basics. So, what is soy sauce? Soy sauce is fermented savoury condiment made from soybeans, wheat, And salt. It's quite simple ingredients. This salty fruit of umami condiment is origin of China. Roots can go back to more than 2000 years ago. Salty liquid called jang was produced by preserved food, which were meat, fish, and vegetables. Then this has developed to many varieties in different countries over the many many years. So how is modern soy sauce made? First process is cooking soybeans. It could be boiled or steamed. Equal portion of wheat will be roasted and crushed into smaller pieces. Then those mix will be inoculated with koji which is mold naturally found on rice grains. About 48 hours later this become a fermentation starter. Now salty water is added, then mushy mix will be keep fermenting for next six months to over a couple of years. Soybeans turn into greater amount of umami and wheat change to the natural sweetness. Finally, when it has done, it will be filtered and pasteurized. All right, let's get tasted. There is more than 300 kinds of aroma components found in naturally brewed soy sauce. Yeah. Floral, fruity, smoky, caramel, and many more. Those complex aroma will help to reduce the unpleasant smell of food, such as meat and fish. Wow. This is very bitter. <gasps> Right, <laughs> this is my local brewer and then we went to visit, factory visit and I, when I was a child I just didn't like it that smell but it reminds me of that smell. <laughs> well, I couldn't smell that well at that age of 10 but definitely fragrance plays a large part of this condiment. Okay, start tasting these ones. 
Those supermarkets on brands ones are available in light and dark with very reasonable prices. Although both taste seems not much different to me, dark is sweeter and slightly thick texture. Additional reduced salt one is slightly bitter aftertaste, but all three are very sort of fragrance and flavor. This reduced salt is about 35% off salt compared to the regular dark. Amoy is one of the common brands in UK. There is light and dark. Again, there are very subtle smell and weak flavor. Almost it feels like a diluted too much with water. But dark is quite sweet. Actually, it has the highest sugar content in here, except sweet soy. That is 24.8 grams sugar per 100 ml. So almost 40 grams of sugar in this small bottle. That's a bit surprising. I found another amoy which says natural fermentation. This one has nice aroma and decent flavor. Also, umami comes quite strongly in aftertaste. So, what's the difference in between those two? At the front faces never say much, do they? You will find out checking back of labels. Natural fermentation soy sauce. Ingredients are water, soybeans, salt, wheat flour, sugar, acidity regulator, and a couple of E numbers. Next, black labels, light soy sauce for mix, dips, and marinate. Soy sauce extract, hmm, 51%. Water, sugar, salt, color, acidity regulator, strike acid, lacto acid, preservative, potassium, sorbet, flavor enhancer. Truth is always in the small letters, isn't it? Let's move on to the another Chinese brand, Pearl River Bridge. This is my Chinese husband's family normally use. Spadia Light has elegant smell, good balance of saltiness and sweetness. It's good soy sauce for all purpose. Dark is very thick and distinctive aroma, almost like a smoky flavor. Also, it has a very sharp bitterness. This one has the highest salt content in out of all. Normally use it as an additional seasonings and coloring for fried rice and fried noodles. As it's such an intense flavor, it is too strong to use on its own. If we cook Chinese dish like famous hackers soy chicken, we use these two. You may come across this premium things. What does it mean? It's a fast press soy sauce, like a virgin olive oil. Lee Kam Keys, sorry for my pronunciation. Premium light soy sauce has a beautiful color and delightful aroma. Initial taste has a punch of umami. I would love to sip that, like a sake. But, strangely, it leaves very unpleasant aftertaste, almost sickly. I think this umami is over the top. It may have a too much enhancer. Okay, we reach to my cupboard, show you. Clear Spring is organic and vegan UK brands. I have two organic shoyu made in UK and Japan. Both have a wonderful smell and good solid flavor. Balance of sweetness and sourness are excellent. I am sorry to say, but I like Japanese one better. UK one is taste a bit flat for me. Both ingredients are very simple and clean. Water, soybeans, wheat and sea salt. You may notice, but it said wheat rather than wheat flour. Most of Chinese soy sauce are made from wheat flour, which makes process faster. But Japanese shoyu is naturally brewed from wheat grains. This is one of major difference in between Japanese and Chinese ones. 
even this one said macho in cedar cakes, over two summers. This is very traditional way of producing shoyu. Not many shoyu are made in this way anymore, but it's really great to see something like this. Here we are. This is the old boy Kikoman. Everything what we expect for soy sauce is here. Strong saltiness comes first. Good balance of sweetness and umami. Nothing more to say. This is the shoyu. But shoyu become more than just a shoyu nowadays. There is so many fancy stuff in around the market. One of top seller could be the less salt soy sauce. It reduced 43% salt compared to regular lead. This one has additional spit vinegar, SO alcohol and sugar. So flavor is much, much right. There is no more density, almost like a flower field. SO alcohol can be used for preservatives. Also, this helps to release that wonderful aroma too. Okay, I am moving on to the specialties. Tamari, is it gluten-free heaven? Mind you, all tamari is not gluten-free. Some of them contain wheat, so you should always check that labels. Here is two lovely tamari, kikoman with wheat, and gluten-free clear spring. Both are absolutely delicious, beautiful aroma and rich umami almost sticky in texture. Kikoman is sweeter. It's a perfect way to toro sashimi. I really love this clear spring yaimon tamari. It's a cream, also complex flavor. Absolutely gorgeous. Best for avocado salad. Tamari normally made in a different process. Tastes much better than regular soy. Best for add up richness and color to your dish. So it may not ideal if you're just replacing to regular soy sauce. Your recipe may not work. You can always get gluten free regular soy sauce if you wish. I will link it below. In Japan, there is five category of shoyu. These are two of them, usukuchi and shiro shoyu. Usukuchi is popular in Kansai area where kaiseki culture developed. Color is light and tastes saltier than regular shoyu. Usukuchi literally translates to light, but it is not equivalent of light soy sauce outside Japan. Light soy sauce is koikuchi shoyu, which is regular all-purpose soy sauce. However, koikuchi is literally meaning of dark, Oh no, this is too confusing. Let's just stop here. Anyway, these two are developed as keep ingredients color brighter rather than make them all brown. It can express that great attention to the beauty of the Japanese cuisine. It is popular using for soup, cooking white fish and vegetables. So you also enjoy the natural color of ingredients. Sweet soy. To be honest with you, I am not the best person to talk about it. Only knowing from my family experience of dim sum. It's the best company with Chong Feng. This is the must have item on a ticket. Other famous sweet soy is ketchup manise. This thick molasses like soy sauce is popular in Indonesia and other Southeast Asia. There is some sweet shoyu in Kyushu, where it is south part of Japan. Sweeter taste is generally more attractive in a warmer climate. I'd love to search more about these. Okay, finally, in here, often categorized as soy sauce, but they are not soy sauce. Ponzu is citrus flavored soy, teriyaki is sweet soy, ajipon again citrus soy sauce. To you is dashi stock soy or a soy flavored seasoning sauce. So, which one? These are very different in prices, aren't they? Is Kikoman value three times more than Sainsbury's? 
I would say yes. Sainsbury's made from soy sauce, not soy beans. This one contains 39% of soy sauce and diluted with water. So it won't work for many dishes like soup, marinating and braising. For me, this is not soy sauce, it's、uh, soy flavoured seasonings. The other two, I think this is up to your preference. If you cook particular cuisine, stick with it. But I generally recommend Japanese shoyu kikoman because it does work most of recipes and good quality soy flavour without too much artificial enhancer, sugar, and additives. Hope you find out something what you need soy sauce seasoning, soy sauce, and shoyu. If you're not really sure, always check the labels. You will find decent amounts of information here. Don't go crazy about large bottles, it will oxidize quite quickly. It won't spoil, but it will lose nice aroma and delicate flavor, especially if it hasn't got any preservatives. Better just get small bottles. Avoid direct sunlight. Keep in a cool temperature. Maybe better keep in the fridge. This is new technology. You may have seen it in a Japanese supermarket. This has got an airtight bag inside here. It will keep as fresh as when it's opened 180 days. Wow. Okay, that's it today. Thank you so much for watching. I will do another video more about shoyu and Japanese cooking. Please like it and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hope to see you soon. Arigatou gozaimashita.